This is section A3, and it's an important section as we start to look at what are known as logarithms. And this is going to be an important topic, not only for future math classes, but certain science classes like chemistry. So we're just going to introduce this topic to you. We're going to learn how to change from what is known as exponential form, like what I have here, 2 to the third power is equal to 8, and how we change this form into what is known as logarithmic form, or we just say log form, which would be shown here in green. So um, what I was interested in here is I just want to show you what you're going to be doing. You don't have to write this slide down, but there are some things I was hoping that you would notice. For example, notice how from the blue equation to the green, every time I'm letting the logarithm equal the exponent. And that's always true. When I'm writing a log form of an exponential expression, the logarithm always equals the exponent. Okay? Something else is true. Um, this number underneath the exponent in exponential form, you probably learned several years ago, that number is called the base. The base is always raised to some power. Well, when I write the log form of this exponential form, notice how the base is written in what is known as a subscript. It's written, think of the basement. It's a little bit lower than everything else. So whatever that base is in exponential form, it's written as a base in the log form. Okay. So I wanted you to kind of get a taste for what you're going to be doing. And on the next screen, I want you to record the actual definition of what a logarithm is. So I'm going to give you just a minute to get this blue definition down. And then I'm going to give you a more succinct, uh, what I would say, I'm going to paraphrase this definition um, into something that I like a little bit better. And this is a good, fancy, book-type definition of a logarithm. But here's another way of defining a logarithm. A logarithm is an exponent. That's basically what a logarithm is. A logarithm is an exponent. So if you'll keep that in mind, it will help you when it comes to doing instructions like this, which is what you're going to do on problems 6 through 13. We're going to take expression equations that are in what we would call exponential form, some number raised to a power equals another number, and we're going to change into what is known as log form, keeping in mind that basically a logarithm is an exponent. Okay, let me do letter A, and then I'll get some volunteers uh, for some other ones. So taking letter A, which is an exponential form, and writing it in log form, it would look like this. I'm going to use the word log. I recognize that the number being raised to the power is 3, and the number being raised to the power is called the base. So I'm going to write 3 in a subscript way. And I hate to get picky, but if I don't, um, just from past experience, I'm going to end up with just like random numbers that are just kind of floating everywhere. So I'm going to give you some specifics on how these numbers should be placed uh, when you're writing log form. All right, so we've recognized the base. So you can think of it this way. Here's the blue line on your notebook paper. It's, it's sort of like that. You just kind of make the base stand out by putting it a little bit lower than everything else. Now, what did I say a minute ago that a logarithm is? Okay, so if a logarithm is an exponent, then I need to let this equation equal the exponent. And I left a space here intentionally for the only other number that's left, 729. 
So here's the way I read this. And in the future, when I ask you to read what a logarithm says, you, you need to say something like this. It's log base 3 of 729 is 6. Notice that I'm not saying that it's log 3 to the 729th power. Not saying that. It's log base 3 of 729 equals 6. Okay, so you'll get used to hearing that, and that's the way I want you to say it. All right, do I get a volunteer on letter B? Who wants to change that exponential equation into log form? Anyone? Maybe uh, Lily. I'll get you started. I'll write the word log for you. What's the base? What's the number being raised to the exponent? Okay, the base is the number being raised to the exponent. So in this case, that's one half. Okay, what is the exponent? Three. So we're going to let the whole logarithm equal the exponent three. That just leaves what for this area? There you go. So the log form of this is log base one, eight, one half of one eighth is three. Okay. Uh, let me see, Brent, what about letter C? Um, you're going to go log base. You go one. What's the number being raised to the exponent? Because that's what the base is called. Okay. 10 is the base. It's the number underneath the exponent. Now I'm going to write this, and I'm going to talk about this particular one because it's special. All right, keep going, Brent. Log Okay. Because logarithms are exponents, we need to let the log equal the exponent. Now, this one is special. It's different than all the others. Whenever your base is 10, like this, it's unique. It's called the common logarithm. It's the only base that we do not write. So if you're looking in your textbook at a log expression like this, and you don't see a number down in the base area, it's always understood to be 10. And that's the only base like that. And in case you're wondering, well, what makes base 10 so special? Well, our number system is base 10. I don't know if you've ever heard of that before. We have the ones place, and then the tens place, and then the hundreds place, and then the thousands place. We're just multiplying by 10 each time. We have a base 10 system. And because of that, this one logarithm is different than the others. It's unique. I just want you to be aware of when you don't see a base written, it's always understood to be 10. Okay? Letter D, Cameron. <clears throat> log base 5 of 25 equals 2. Okay, now which of these numbers is being raised to the exponent? 2. That's the base. Oh. The base is the number underneath the exponent. So it's log base 2 of 32, 32 equals, equals 5. Very good. Haley, letter E. Base 5. Good. Good. Okay. Think you get it? If you'll keep in mind, really, there's three numbers. If you remember what the base is, it's always underneath the exponent. And you know what the exponent is. Remember that logarithms basically are exponents, so we need to show that the logarithm equals whatever the exponent is. Okay? 
Now my next three, that's what you're going to do on 6 through 13 on the homework assignment for A3. Well, when you get to number 14, we're going to go the other direction. We're given log form. We're going to do a little bit more than what the book says. So what I'm showing you is the way I want you to do 14 through 25. I want you to change this into exponential form, and then we will do what the book says, evaluate the logarithm. And I've put in green the way I paraphrase those instructions. Now let me show you what I mean by that. I'll do letter A for you. Log base 2 of A. What this really says is this. If you have the number 2 as a base raised to some power, you get 8. That's the exponential form of this log form. Now, to evaluate the log, what you're actually doing is you're coming up with that exponent that's needed to make this true. What is that exponent? That's evaluating the logarithm. So I want you to do this in two parts. I want you to do change the log form to exponential, and you can just use x every time as the exponent and then tell what that exponent is. That's what it means to evaluate the log. Okay, so uh, Wesley, what about letter B? What would that look like in exponential form? Three to the x power. Okay, and now evaluate the log. What is that exponent? Three. Now, let me just real quickly help you to prevent a common mistake. What Wesley told me was not this. There's a huge difference in 3 to the x power and 3 times x. Okay, I know that probably sounds obvious, but I get this a lot when people are changing from log form to exponential form. We're looking for an exponent here, not another number being multiplied by 3. Okay, um, let me see. Maybe Hannah, letter C. Very good. That's the exponent form. And so evaluate that. Very good. She said 2. Exactly right. All right, uh, let's see, Elizabeth, can you do letter D? Very good, and evaluate. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm going back over to Lily. Can you do letter E? All right, and evaluate it. It is 5. Awesome. Letter F I've starred for a reason. I want to I look at this one for just a little bit. Uh, give me, first of all, uh, Brent, give me the exponential form. Okay, I'm going to correct him just a little bit. I think I know what he mean, means, but I think he said 10x. Or 10 to the... Yes, and I know that's picky, but it's important because I might have some people that actually do 10x. 10 to the x power equals negative 100. Does that look weird? I hope it does, because is it possible to take a positive base, raise it to any exponent, and get a negative result? Some people might say, well, put in a negative exponent. Well, what does that do? It just flips it. It doesn't make the number negative. It just gives us the reciprocal. So the bottom line is this. It doesn't matter that it's base 10. It could be any base. Anytime you're asked to evaluate the log of a negative number like this, you're going to have to say it's not possible. Does not matter what the base is. I don't want you to think it's only for base 10. It just so happened that this example is base 10. All right, very good. Luke, uh, letter G, what would that be in exponent form? Uh, 5 to the power of x. 
All right, and can you evaluate that? Now, I would agree with that if it were equal to 25. So it can't be regular to, it's got to be what would cause, oh, negative two. there you go. So negative 2 is the exponent, the evaluated. Okay, for H and I, they're special. And because of that, I'm going to go to another screen. You can go ahead and write those down. But I'm going to show you a technique that you're going to be required to use. Um, and I will tell you on the test when it's necessary. Okay, so here's that same problem, letter H. In exponential form, it would say this. 9 raised to some power is equal to 27. Okay, this one's probably not quite as obvious. The others were pretty obvious, but right off the top of my head, I don't know what number I would raise 9 to to get 27. So here's where this technique called the common base technique is going to be useful. For those times down the road when you get to college algebra and you won't be allowed to use calculators, and you've got to do this by thinking, okay? Here's what we're thinking. We need a number that could be used as a base to represent 9 and 27. So the same base for both numbers, but that base obviously will have to be raised to different powers. Okay, let me show what I mean. I'm going to rewrite the number 9 as 3 raised to the second power. I just chose a different way to represent 9 using a base and a power. Well, the common base technique says I have to use the same base to represent 27. So 3 to the what? Okay, so this is what the common base technique is all about. I've just written these numbers in a different way using exponents, but the key is I have to use the same base for both. And now the tough part's over. When I've got the common bases, all I want you to do now is take these exponents, just the exponents, as an equation and solve for x. And when you solve for x, you'll have your answer. So evaluating this logarithm, we would say 9 to the 3 halves power is equal to 27. Okay? Get the common bases and then exponents equal each other and solve. All right, I got one more for you and this will do it for today and then we're going to finish this lesson up um, in another session. I went ahead and changed the log form to exponential form. Can you think of a number that I could use as a base to represent each of these? Somebody said 8, and I agree that I could do 8 to the second to get 64, but can I use 8 to a power to get 1 over 32? So I can't use 8. Somebody said 4, and that would work for 64, but what about this? So I can't use 4. What about 2? 2 to the sixth is 64. 2 to the negative fifth is 1 over 32. So once you've done this, the tough part's over. Just make an equation. Make an equation for these exponents and solve. Okay, let me uh, talk about tonight what's optional. We're going we're gonna to do the graphing part tomorrow. I have given you enough information if you want to you could do these tonight. They're not due until Friday, but you should be able to handle these based on what we did today. Okay? Great job.